Hello and welcome to HelpYourMath.com. In this video, we are going to look at examples of special right triangles, specifically 30, 60, 90 right triangles. This is just a refresher video. If you need to see why we get the ratios that we get, please go back and watch the other video where I go into much more detail about how we figured out what the side length ratios are of a 30, 60, 90 right triangle. Let's look at an example. In this example, we know that the shortest side is 11. Now, when we have a 30, 60, 90 triangle, and in fact, when we have any triangle, um, there is a property that says that the shortest side is always opposite the least angle measure. So the least angle measure of a 30, 60, 90 triangle is 30 degrees. So that indicates to me that this leg is 11. So if that leg is 11, remember, this is the side that's opposite 30. So we want to remember 1 root 3, 2. And again, I'm going to show both ways. So we're going to start out with that. What we know is that we're dealing here with 11. We want to find the other two sides. So maybe I'll call this one X and this one Y. Well, what we can do is we can set up little ratios if we want to. And we can say, okay, well, I have the ratio, of, I have the smallest over the medium. And we're going to just ignore that for one second. The fact that it's irrational doesn't matter. Um, the smallest is 11 over the medium I called X. And then I can cross multiply and I get x is equal to, there it is, 11 times the square root of 3. So I know I'm going to say the, the larger leg, the, sorry, the longer leg, the longer leg is 11 times the square root of 3. And then I can do this again to figure out what the length of the hypotenuse is. So then the hypotenuse will be, so this is 11 root 3. And I can set up a ratio again if I want. I can say, okay, the shortest side over the hypotenuse is equal to the shortest side was 11 over the hypotenuse I called y. And then I can cross multiply. I get 1y equals 2 times 11, which is 22. So the hypotenuse is 22. And that kind of matches, right? So we have 1 root 3, 2. Here we have 11, 11 root 3, double 11. Okay, the other way that I sometimes also do is to um, use variables. So I say x, x root 3 and 2x, and then I can fill in, okay, 11 is equal to x, so I know x is equal to 11 because that's the information that I was given. Based on that, I just plug in 11 anywhere I see an x. So this longer side will be, um, I the way I can set this up is I can say x root 3 is equal to 11 root 3, and that's all I can do there, so that's done. And then I can do the same thing here. 2x is equal to, let's substitute for x, 2 times 11, so 2x is equal to 22, so the hypotenuse is 22. So those are kind of the two ways that I tend to do these problems, and you might be thinking, well, gosh, that was pretty simple. can I just kind of like look at it and know? And yeah, sometimes you can. Sometimes it's a little bit harder. When we're given something with a radical, it might be more difficult. Um, so we just want to pick one of those methods. All right, in this example, the longest side, so the longest side is which side? For any right triangle, we are talking about the hypotenuse here. So the hypotenuse is 18 root 3. I'm going to set up my right triangle. I have 30 degrees here, 60 degrees here. And that hypotenuse is opposite the right angle, so here we have 18 root 3. I want to figure out now what this side length is and what this side length is. So hopefully you figured out one that you like. Um, one of those two methods I used. I'll do one for this one and I'll do another one for the other one. So I'll use the ratios for this one. So using the ratios, the ratio of the sides of a 30, 60, 90 is 1, square root of 3, 2. And in this case, I know the 2. This corresponds to the 2. That is the longest side. That is the hypotenuse. So I have that these are kind of like the same piece. I want to figure out the shortest side. So I'm going to say, okay, well, I know the shortest side over the longest side, that the ratio of the shortest side to the longest side is going to be, and this is y, over 18 root 3. So we want to make sure when we're setting up our ratios, I have short side, short side, over hypotenuse and hypotenuse. We need to make sure those match up, otherwise we're going to run into some issues. Okay, so now I'm going to cross multiply. I get 18 radical 3 is equal to 2y. I'm going to divide both sides by 2 to get y by itself. And I get 9 radical 3 is equal to y. So I know that the shorter leg has a length of 9 radical 3. 
Okay, so let's see. Does that make sense based on the ratio we have? Yes, because 9 radical 3 is half of 18 radical 3. Now we need to figure out this longer side, or I sometimes call it like the medium side, the middle side. It's also really the longer leg. So I can do this. Let's set up a ratio again. We're going to set up a ratio for the, this is going to be the middle over large. So middle root 3 over 2 is the ratio that is known for all 30, 60, 90s over, the, we don't know this, I called it x, and we know that this is 18 radical 3. I'm going to cross multiply here, Whee! and that's going to give me, so 18 times radical 3 times radical 3, the two radical 3s, that's the square root of 3 squared, that becomes 3. So I have 18 times 3, which is 54, is equal to 2x, which means x is equal to half of 54, which is 27. So then here I'm getting 27, and we might be thinking, wait a minute, isn't the middle side supposed to be the, ira the, the, middle, the middle leg supposed to be the irrational one? But because the others were irrational, we, this actually worked out that the middle side is no longer irrational. So the longer leg is 27. Now I chose to use the side that was given to us. It probably would have been a little bit easier if I had done small over medium or medium over small, because then I would have just a little bit less work. But either way, it all works out. Okay, one more example, and in this example I'm going to use the equations, so the other way, the other method. This time we know that the middle side, so that's the longer leg, is 3. So here's my 60 degrees, my 30 degrees, my right angle. I know that this over here is 3. This is an unknown, I'm going to call it x. This is an unknown, I'm going to call it y. Okay, when it's a 30, 60, 90, I'm going to use my equations. We have x, x root 3 and 2x, that's always the ratio of the side lengths. And what do we know? We know the middle side. So we know, in this case, that x radical 3 is equal to 3. Okay, to figure out the, the short leg, shorter leg, we need to get x by itself. So we're going to take this equation, we're going to divide both sides by radical 3. And this works out well because I used x as the variable there. So that worked out really well for me. Those cancel. Now I have x is equal to 3 over radical 3. I want to rationalize that denominator, so I'm going to multiply by root 3 over root 3. Here I get, ooh, this is going to keep going, isn't it? We get 3 radical 3 over 3. We can simplify that. We just end up with the square root of 3. So the shorter leg is the square root of 3. So we have, what do we have? We have the square root of 3, and then we have 3. And to figure out this longer side, so to figure out the longer side, I'm going to be smart this time. I'm going to use that short side. I know the longer side is double the short side. So I know that 2x is going to be 2 times the square root of 3, and that's it. I'm not going to get x by itself because I need 2x, right? This is 2x, this is 2x, this is the value, 2 radical 3. So then here I can say the hypotenuse is 2 radical 3, right? It's double that smallest leg. These have been examples of finding remaining sides when we're given one side of a 30, 60, 90 right triangle. Thank you for stopping by.